In my mother tongue, Bangla, Golpo is a curious word. It means story, a noun, and it also means conversation, the verb. I have grown up to the wonderful sound of Golpo, stories and conversations that have shaped me to be the storyteller that I am today. In this brand new season of Golpo, stories from around the world, me, your storyteller Rituparna, will continue to bring you stories that have picked me. Yes, stories pick me. They really ask me to tell them. They poke, punch, provoke and push me to tell them. But before they do all of that, they speak to me, lighting up my mind and my heart in ways that only a very special story can do. And in this podcast, I bring to you some of those special stories. These are just some of my stories, handpicked and tucked in my story bag, so I can tell them to you when the time is right. Are these stories for children or adults? Well, they are for anyone who has a heart beating for stories. And I really hope that this podcast helps you discover that inside you. Play this on your way to work, to put your child to sleep, to create a moment together as a family, to share an idea with your team, find a dose of inspiration, creativity, or a fresh perspective perhaps. Let these stories be your companion when you want some quality time with yourself. Like I said, you will hear a story today and I hope it stays with you and lights up your heart and mind like the way these stories do for me. Truth and falsehood lived in close proximity. They were always close by. Sometimes they crossed paths, sometimes they avoided each other completely. No matter where they were, they always knew that the other was just around the corner. Once truth and falsehood met at a crossroad, they greeted each other politely. One of them was clearly not doing well. Falsehood asked, How are you, Truth? Are you well? Truth replied, Not all is well falsehood. Each year is getting worse than the last. Truth looked like he had been ravaged by time. His clothes were in tatters, his hair matted and dirty. He looked weak and weary, almost like he had not eaten for days. Was he not looked after? Didn't people seek him out any more? Or had they abandoned him altogether? Falsehood was curious. What's wrong? he asked. Everything, replied Truth. Wherever I go, I bring trouble for myself and the few people who still believe in me. Truth paused for a moment and looked at falsehood. You seem to be more popular today. I can see that times have not been kind to you, Truth, said falsehood, trying to be as kind as he could. Now, would you come with me? Let's have a meal together, he offered. Truth kept quiet, hoping that falsehood would not land them in any trouble. You know, you could be as well off as me, wear the fine clothes, eat the best meals. Just that, you stick to your good ways. Come on, let's go this one time together, both you and me. You will see why people like me so much. Now, be a good friend and don't speak out against anything I say today, he added. Truth, on normal days, would have simply declined. But he was hungry. And so he agreed. He was weak. He was alone. His spirits were low. He needed the strength to start all over again. So for this one time, he agreed to walk with falsehood. Falsehood led Truth into the finest inn in town. The inn was filled with guests. Food and wine kept the people busy. Conversations, discussions, debates and gossip floated around the inn. Falsehood and Truth ate 
to their heart's delight and sat seated till late in the evening. Falsehood waited till most of the guests had departed. Suddenly, he thrust his fist on the table and thundered, How long do I have to wait? The innkeeper looked up. He didn't want any trouble. He rushed to the table where falsehood and truth were seated. Oh, what's the matter, sir? He asked politely. How long do I have to wait to get the change for my sovereign? I gave one to the boy who served us, asked falsehood as sternly as he could. The innkeeper called the boy and asked him about the money. Well, obviously, the boy knew nothing about it. And so he shook his head, denying receiving any sovereign from the guest. The innkeeper became furious. He boxed the boy's ears and he started to cry. The innkeeper took a sovereign out from his pocket and offered it to falsehood. We apologize, sir. We are very sorry for your discomfort, he said, bending low. Falsehood took the sovereign. He rubbed it between his fingers and turned towards truth. Are you there, my friend? I hope you are feeling better. Truth looked at falsehood and said nothing. He had promised to stay quiet tonight. Once they were at a safe distance from the inn, falsehood burst out laughing. <laughs> Did you see that truth? That's how I contrive things. Truth turned to falsehood and said, I'd rather die than do things your way, falsehood. This is enough. He walked away and the two parted ways forever. This one story sent me down the rabbit's hole. I particularly love that truth and falsehood are juxtaposed as two characters. Two values are personified, given a voice, a backstory, and real human emotions, where the contrast between them is spelt out. It's not the story of two characters, but two values who become the people they represent. I love this trope. For English teachers listening to this podcast, try picking this up in your writing classroom. The story nudged me to think of the many lies we tell. The ones we tell ourselves, the ones we tell others, and the ones that people tell about us. To be human is to lie. And we all lie when we have to. Sometimes they are small lies. Sometimes they are big lies. Sometimes we lie to win, sometimes we lie to hide our loss. The fact that we tell and accept each other's lies is what makes us coexist. This story opened a fascinating world of discovery for me. For example, when and how do humans, particularly children, learn to lie? Do young children lie deliberately? How do we identify and deal with pathological liars? Did you know? Teenagers are likely to practice what is called maladaptive storytelling, a version of storytelling that is constructed with lies. Something that made me think of tall tales, another version of lies that often make for hilarious stories. I love the story of truth and falsehood because it doesn't end by moralizing, which is a loftier value. Take this story to young adults and it will open up conversations about ethics, morality and integrity. The times it is more valuable to lie than to say the truth. Lying is a sensitive topic. No one likes to be called a liar, whether in the classroom, in the living room or in the boardroom. Take this story to any space and it will make a few people uncomfortable. The trick is, how do you talk about lying without making anyone feel like you're pointing a finger at them? This will be an interesting story if it is told at workplaces. Put this story in context of corporate lies and fraud and you can open doors to a tough and tricky discussion point. For business leaders hiring new teams, for leaders taking on new challenges, honesty, integrity and ethics are valuable discussions to have. If you are wondering where and how to begin, do it with this story. You know, 
storytelling often earns a bad name for itself. For a lot of people, storytelling is all about creating a make-believe fictional world that manipulates listeners into believing in something that doesn't exist. Storytellers are accused of lying, of tarnishing facts, exaggerating truth, creating alternate realities, and making people believe in a story that is never really 100% true. Once, a publisher rejected my personal story. Well, he believed that it wasn't true enough. It's the story of how I helped myself read without stammering. Yes, storytellers are accused of dishonesty too. And I know why one may be accused of tampering with personal stories. Studies in the space of brain science reveal that memories are never entirely reliable. So where does that leave you? Are you always telling a true story? And are you telling it truthfully? That's all I have for you this week. Remember to read the show notes below. Also, to look up www.yourstorybag.com. As we create this repertoire of stories for our listeners, we are also working towards integrating the stories in this podcast as content for our workshop learners. Keep an eye on our blogs and interesting stories of where do these stories travel. Thank you for listening. Golpo Stories from Around the World is a podcast of stories that spark conversations. You will find a bunch of traditional tales in here, retold and bridged with the world that we live in today. A story grows only when it is told. So go ahead and share these stories in the classroom, in the boardroom or in your living room. And come back to me and tell me what did everyone say? If you like my stories and want to support this podcast, then you may want to gift a story, a little contribution to make storytelling sustainable for you, me and others. To know more about my work, you can look up www.yourstorybag.com. I have a weekly newsletter. Follow the sound of my stories with the hashtag Storytelling with Rituparna. You can connect with me on social media. The links are in the show notes below. Until the next story, happy storytelling.